the first thing to understand is we're, in a, we're entering into a period of complete disruption around the global economy. So there's transformation happening at all levels. We, should, we need to be very careful not to figure out that we've got a plan and we're going to stick to it and make things work. That's the first thing to understand. There's going to be unexpected uh, transformations happening, um, insights and breakthroughs coming from places that we don't expect. So we shouldn't close the door on areas of innovation uh, in Canada of any type. But within Canada, where our unique advantages come, come in is, is around really the industrial and uh, natural resources side of things. Uh, a lot of people in Canada are trying to figure out how to get away from natural resources because those industries are high emitting and that sort of thing. But the world is going to need those natural resources. Somebody's going to produce them, somebody's going to supply them, and they represent the best opportunity for us to innovate and, and develop the pathways to a decarbon, decarbonizing world. So the, the point really is identify where the biggest challenges are in the industrial economy and run straight towards them, solve those problems. We do two things. The first thing we do is we wind up with natural resources that we can export to the world even when there's a high barrier for the uh, carbon footprint requirements. And the second thing is we develop the, the solutions that we can sell to the world because other places are also trying to develop natural resources. Understanding how the oil and gas industry needs to participate is that they need to understand that they're entering a new game now. Um, there's a danger in the oil and gas industry because they've been around for a century for them to think of themselves as a mature industry. They may be a mature industry, but the world has changed and they need to think like a new industry. They need to realize that they ha there's going to be a lot of transformational changes that they'll have to undergo to play in a low carbon world. There may be some reduction in opportunities, but the opportunities remaining may have a higher grade uh, uh, profitability for them. The second thing is uh, a lot of the leading companies have had an internal price on carbon for many years now. They need to double down on that. So when they're selecting their opportunities for their next investments, they need to be looking at where are their opportunities to decarbonize within those investments. And that may give them different, make different choices in terms of uh, which opportunities they pursue and which ones they don't pursue, not because of tomorrow's profitability, but because of protection against increasing standards for, uh, for decarbonization. So they really are going to have to up their game on playing in a decarbonizing world. They also have to be really aware of what end markets they're, per they're entering, which may be displaced in the near term. critical thing to understand is we're talking about industrial innovation here and it's and what the governments have done in terms of setting a certain price uh, a floor price on carbon for example out to 2022 that's great that's five years away the term of most investments now is measured in industrial terms in measured in decades and you need certainty out typically 10 years before you can really make a decision on things. So knowing what things, what's happening out five years is really good, but there's still a lot of risk involved in a lot of what happens after 2022 kind of conversations. So one role that the government can play is finding mechanisms to de-risk uh, investments that are going in now based on that 2022 price. For example, they might make commitments to grandfather that floor price in for the following five years for any investments that are going in today so that people don't wind up five years in and have a change in government and suddenly that goes away or it, it changes and their economics of their investments go away. So that uncertainty is a, is a real barrier to innovation. So the longer and more solid people can see that future trend, the more confident the investors are going to be. large industrial players don't have one monolithic uh, culture within them. Each department and division has a different way of looking at the world. That's really where the challenge lies for uh, an SME with a novel technology 
to try and get through the door. Large companies that really want to take advantage of entrepreneurial, innovative small, small groups really need to figure out how to create a doorway or an entryway into their organization, almost a concierge service to help uh, SMEs understand all of the touch points within the organization and develop a strategy that works throughout the organization. It would, it's too often a year of struggle and pain that results in uh, ultimately a no when they get to the procurement division and that's we should be able to avoid that kind of disappointment. Most folks operating in research or R&D labs, whether it's uh, government labs or uh, academic researchers, are focused on what I call a technology. Uh, there's a, they're solving a small problem, but they're not looking at something that would actually plug into an industrial process and how does that interface with the outside world and all the bits and pieces. And so the technology is a fragment of a solution. Um, and they develop blind spots around where the weaknesses are. When they go knock on the door for industry, the industrial guys get a thousand guys knocking on their door looking for selling the next great thing and they're looking for why not to invest in it, where's the weakness? And they'll find a weakness and knock it down. The critical issue is how the integration, the adaptation, the scale up, the field testing, the de-risking. That central sentence that we use time and again for focusing our activities is rapid cost-effective reduction of uncertainty to enable early decision making. The, the key there is what's the uncertainty? If you understand the uncertainties that are stopping decision makers, stopping the investors, stopping the first customers from coming to the table, then you can focus in on how do we drive that uncertainty down? How do we answer the question that the investors need to have answered? That's where you open the doors to getting the innovations to move off the lab bench and into the field. That's where CMC works.